Welcome back to Dav Twang. I'm Dave. Got you moved in here for a kind of a, a jam band kind of a, a, a version of a country shuffle, I guess. Pretty upbeat, and it features the um, major and relative minor chord in, a, in G. So that's G major and uh, E minor, and the, the rhythm sort of... <laughs> Of course, you could do that. Having a little trouble getting it all muted out down there. That's why I like to do it, you know, with 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 uh, bar chords and try it in different places. Um, and that's your backing track for this too. So, um, melody wise or single note wise, excuse me, um, using uh, in that everything in that demonstration is uh, uh, G major pentatonic. Pretty sure every note of it, if, if, if not 95% of it. Um, G major diatonic scale, just the do, re, mi scale, would also work great with this. And um, so, you know, feel free to mix some of that in there. But I'm going to stick with the... the major pentatonic to show you these skills today because I think um, they just they work beautifully over both chords and I want to really show you some phrasing and some target note and a couple of rhythmic ideas that will just be really fun I think uh, for this style. So um, if you're familiar with the major pentatonic stuff and in, in different positions and shapes and so forth then you're kind of ahead of the game here today. Uh, if not, here's a diagram that really shows kind of a simple path of a couple of octaves and maybe some extra notes there at the top um, for this major pentatonic. So that looks like... Okay, and that's for G. Relative major, E minor. Works perfectly over it. Um, so you want to really, you know, don't worry about your fingering and kind of, you know, playing that fast and, and, and the same way over and over necessarily, but just, you know, get your ear and your, your hand and your body used to that. You know, and just, you know, try to be musical with it right away. Um. Think of it as also it's helpful to to recognize the octaves. Isn't that right? G to G. Okay, and then for this octave. Sorry. Okay. Um, a lot of what I did in that demo was right in here. Okay, so a lot of it going from between those two G's and then going up. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. It, there was a lot of that featured in that demo, and I did that on purpose because I just think that's such a important sound for this style and it's really it's really fun at first you know it's aggravating because it hurts your fingers you're not used to that um, but you know let me show you kind of what's going on there and then you can practice that a little bit at, at a time each day um, so let's start here with this G okay. now if I were to continue up this octave Let's just do work off that little phrase. Uh, okay, there's this octave. And then up here. Alright. Now, when I bend this one, it comes equal with it. 
okay? If I keep going up, it's that note. So if I hit that with that pinky under there, this isn't easy to do at first. Okay. Um, so, you know, work on that a little bit at a time. Uh, if it's working out for you already, great. Um, if not, you know, you don't, you don't have to go up. You don't have to put that one up there, but definitely work on this bending right here. All right. And just, you know, once you get that under your fingers, use simple phrasings and keep it, you know, at a tempo that makes sense for you. Put that track on and start improvising with that right away. copy all of that that wasn't like you know lick number one you know in the tab and lick number two it's not like that uh, 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 the way we present it on this channel just visualize you know what you're gonna do don't worry about doing a perfect version of it right um right there at the end i kind of started leaning on that d so we've been talking about from root to root for the g Turns out, if you find the fifth of your chord, do, re, mi, fa, so, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth for that G major chord is D. And you can go from D to D as well um, with these simple phrasings. taking that part of that pattern and getting from D to D. That was a little flat, but maybe not. Okay, now, just adding that in there, to, you know, root to root and then fifth to fifth, pretty simple program but that's going to really that's going to expand and deepen your melodic sound to your improvisation just exponentially right away here's what I mean gives you some nice phrasings and kind of a little system there right away. So really practice that G to G and then D to D. Interesting that when you bend that up, that is D. So you kind of get double your money on that lick. That's probably why it sounds so cool, right? Harmonically. Now, when it gets to the E minor, you don't have to overthink this, but you know, a lot of times you're just going to want to land like right on that E for the E minor. That's great. That works great. 
Um, none of these notes are going to be bad on either chord. Um, but really think of that framework. I'm, I'm, I'm starting on or targeting the, the root, but also the fifth. Okay. And then one more quick idea here before I get you to the practice loop. These are just, this is, you know, there's not a lot to memorize as far as, you know, this major pentatonic shape. Um, so this is a lesson where you really get to think about, you know, being musical. Um, one of the things that works really well with this, and it kind of l lets you sound a little faster than, you're, than, than you really are or something. That's why I like it. It, it, w it works out that way. Is this... Um, Okay, let me do that again. Now let me slow that down. Okay, now if we wrote that all out in tab and have a bunch of hammers and it'd be, it'd be kind of messy looking and it, it would take more time, take a deep breath. Watch this again. It's like we're going one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, but we're leaving out that that ah that fourth sixteenth on each beat. That little pause makes it jumpy. Now, you don't have to do it up to speed, even if you're playing with the track. And I'll show you what I mean. You can, you can kind of think in, in half of the tempo. Put that together with more connected stuff and holding your bends and stuff, you get a nice mixture of, you know, poppy stuff and, and kind of chicken head stuff and um, real melodic, pretty stuff like this. I just did we kind of talked about it. I didn't show you you know sequences of licks for every bit of that but all the bits and pieces of what I was just playing are in this lesson you might have to go and kind of watch it a couple times and 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 uh, put the pieces of the puzzle together and I'm not trying to make it puzzling <laughs> I'm trying to clarify it for you but I really think that this overview approach will will work for many of you better than just spending however many hours you know perfecting three or four licks that would be cool nothing wrong with that um but licks are easy to forget you ever notice that you come back a couple of days later and you're like kind of starting over you're looking for that tab again and you know all that stuff so go at your own pace. Take these skills and really integrate them. Mortar them into your, your ear and your hand and your body and your style of musical expression. Enjoy the practice loop and hope to hear from some of you soon. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.